Hello, everybody. My name is Kelly Lynch. I'm a licensed social worker and life coach from Connecticut in the USA. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Her Story TV. This is Gertrude Macha here in beautiful Wellington, New Zealand. And we are graced today with the presence of yet another amazing young woman coming to us from the United States this time. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our platform. Please tell everybody your full name, where you're based, how old you are, and share your magical story with us today. Hello, everybody. My name is Kelly Lynch. I'm a licensed social worker and life coach from Connecticut in the USA. We're having a very rainy, cloudy, and cold day here. I don't know <laughs> if I would call it beautiful, but at least it's green. <laughs> uh, and I, so, yeah, so my story is very multifaceted, I, I would say. So I am 38, soon to be 39 next, next month, and I have an incredible, powerful eight-year-old daughter, and I'm a single mom, business owner times two, and I specialize in working with women on empowerment and building up their mindsets to be able to really believe in themselves and stand on a very strong, powerful foundation uh, where they can move unapologetically and defiantly through the world in whatever way they deem fit. So this really came about uh, as I was going through the process of the expiration of my marriage. Uh, my daughter was about a year and a half when I left my ex-husband and I fled from my marriage I was in a relationship with my ex-husband for just shy of 10 years. Uh, we were married four or five and dating between dating and being engaged, we were together for about four and a half years prior to getting married. Um, everything about the relationship was abusive. Uh, it's important to me to emphasize that he never hit me and I always, whenever I tell my story, I always make sure to say that so that women understand that domestic violence does not just revolve around physical violence. It is so many other things and includes so many other aspects and types of violence that we can experience. So in my relationship, it began with a lot of just mental manipulation of breaking down my thought process around who I believed I was when I came into the relationship. And that slowly progressed into isolating me more and more from friends and family, which then escalated to financial abuse and manipulation to the point where at one point I had no idea how much money we had. Uh, I was not allowed access to our checking account or our bank statements. Uh, and I was told repeatedly that I wasn't to be trusted with the money that we had because he didn't believe that I would be financially responsible. Uh, and when I had never demonstrated any of that kind of behavior prior to our relationship, um, this then escalated to more emotional manipulation and eventually pretty severe gaslighting to the point where when I was around 29 or 30 years old, I actually believed that I was having an early onset of dementia. I literally thought I was losing my mind, um, which then escalated to sexual abuse and a lot of inappropriate touching in spite of the boundaries that I would set around not wanting to be touched in certain ways. In the last six months of our relationship, that's where the threat of physical violence began to happen. And there were three separate incidents, um, the last one being the most severe and being the one that got me to say enough. Uh, in the last incident, he, he had walked around our home. Our daughter was, like I said earlier, about a year and a half at the time. He had walked around our home for close to two, two and a half hours with a knife in his hand in an absolute rage after we had had a disagreement and at one point threatened to slit my throat in front of our daughter. Um, towards the end of the incident, he had put the knife away and 
threw punches in the air next to my head. Again, he never hit me. He never laid a finger on me in violence. But he threw punches in the air next to my head and told me I deserved to be beaten and that if I had been beaten by him, maybe I would be a better woman. And uh, I mean, there, there's just, there's so many points that I can hit on in that. But um, at the end of that incident, I like the next, in the following days, I disclosed to my parents what was going on. And I had resources in my family system that many women do not have access to. So it was easy for me to be able to get out in a safe way and to have financial resources that I could lean on. Um, and so, so I disclosed to my parents, we planned for six weeks and then I ended up fleeing in the middle of the night with my daughter while he was at work. Uh, I had a protective order. I had no contact orders for myself and my daughter to protect us from him while we were figuring out through the court uh, how to handle things in the safest way possible. And from start to finish, the divorce took roughly about six months. And at that point, once the divorce was finalized, I just started rebuilding. Today, my businesses are successful and thriving. My daughter is amazing. She is just this powerful little human being. And I'm financially stable. I'm in a healthy relationship. Life is really good. So if I could say one thing to every single woman out there, you get to define what your story is, not anybody else. Wow. Wow. What an amazing story. And with a beautiful ending, you know, a lot of women suffer in silence. Yes. A lot of women will go for years and years and years of abuse without having the courage to tell a single soul. And you sound like you had family support. Yes. What do you think made you hold back from getting out a little bit earlier? Shame. That's an easy answer. Shame. I was, you know, to be in the kind of relationship that I was in, I it's... I, there's still a part of me that says, I feel wrong for saying this, it, and, but I'm, I'm not, I'm truly not sure in spite of what I do for a living, I'm not sure how else to describe it. Honestly, mm-hmm. it's not the way I was raised, right? It's not the way I was raised to believe that it's appropriate for somebody to, to treat me like that. It's not the way that I was raised to treat anybody else like that for that matter. Uh, and I was so ashamed that I had, allowed myself to be in that position. Mm -hmm. And I say allow very intentionally and purposefully, because one of the hardest lessons that I had to really take the time to sit with in exiting from this relationship was that I, you know, I don't take ownership of what he did and what his choices were. Right. We don't force anybody else to treat us that way. No. But we do have to take ownership of why was I there in the first place? And part of my ownership in that was that I had not been setting the boundaries that I needed to set. I had not been prioritizing myself or honoring myself in the way that I deserved to be prioritized and honored by me. And that open it didn't cause him to do the things that he did that's yeah. his to own but it certainly didn't make it any harder so if you were to go back and have a conversation with the younger you that young woman who was in the middle of this fog unsure which way to go what to do based on what life has taught you up till this point what three nuggets of wisdom would you give her you were born worthy Mm-hmm. Full stop, right? Like it starts there. Yeah. I, Regardless of what anybody else ever says to you or about you, you are worthy simply because you are breathing. You are worthy. That's it, right? Then the second point would be because you are worthy, because everything is built off of that. Yeah. Because you are worthy, you deserve to honor yourself enough 
to set boundaries, to set expectations of others so that they know this is how I show up to the world and I expect you to play at my level, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing or able to play at my level, I'm willing to teach, right? If you don't know how, but you have to be willing to meet me there, right? And if you're not willing to meet me there, it's a then, deal break, huh? Yeah, we don't yeah. need to do this, right? So it starts with worth, then goes into boundaries and expectations. And then the third point that I would make to, to my younger self is you deserve to love you because you are worthy. Yeah. Right? We teach other people how to love us based on how we love ourselves. Yes. <laughs> and that's a very, very difficult one for most women. Very yes. difficult. Now, tell me something, going into this relationship, when you look back now, were there any warning signs, anything that could have warned you? Tell me what those characteristics are. There could be a young woman who is in a similar situation right now who could learn from this. What were the warning bells for you? His looking back now, I, I don't think that I would have seen it in that moment because I was so naive. Yes. Um, but in looking back now, it was his ego. Okay. He very much presented as if he could do no wrong. Uh-huh. And if it, and that if something had gone wrong in his life, there was never any ownership. It was always somebody else's somebody fault. Somebody else's fault. Mm-hmm. Those, I would That's say those are the two biggest things. Characteristics, behavioral characteristics, right? Yes, absolutely. So what have you done for yourself to heal from this experience? A lot of therapy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know, I, since, since the divorce, I, I've really taken a lot of time to work with very gifted clinicians and coaches. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I'm, I'm currently working with a life coach because I think that just the ongoing personal development is, is so important, for sure. especially for me as a professional as well. Um, that I'm, I'm not going to ask somebody to do something that I wouldn't be also be willing to do do myself. Right. Uh, So I'm constantly working with other professionals just on my own personal development. But then in addition to that, right, like sitting with the, we don't just have to look at, at, you know, what do we need to think about and what, what do we need to look at? How are we going to put action to those things? Yes. Right? Because at some point, we have to stop talking and start doing. Yeah. Right? So we can talk about boundaries and expectations all day long. And that's great. That's cool. We need the insight. But then we have to do something with that insight. We have right? to take so it the becomes the both and, right? Not either or. I like that. So let's finish our interview with my question about the future. Mm. you did this to set a role model to be the role model for your daughter yes you wanted to make sure that her life is changed completely she makes the right decisions based on how you're living your life right now if you could have a conversation with the future you when you're 100 years old what would you say to that woman i'm so proud of you oh i love that I'm so proud of you. Mm-hmm. And I honestly struggle to like not get choked up saying that yeah. because there's so much risk involved when we leave f- from a situation that's dangerous or when we try something for the very first time that's brand new to us mm-hmm. or when we say, I want to make this change in my life and I don't know how, but I'm going to try it anyway. And I'll figure it out as I go. Right. Like there's, there's different levels of risk and obviously there's different kinds of risk. There's Mm -hmm. risk exists on this giant spectrum, but anytime we're taking a leap, there's risk involved in that leap of faith. And I get so excited about the idea of what's next, right? (laughs) Because there's a bit of risk involved in all of that. And I'm so proud of who I was, who I am and who I'm becoming in that I've, I fear risk like anybody else, but I, 
I'm not going to let that fear stop me. And I'm so proud of, of that woman because of that. Oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful way to, to finish this, um, this interview. Thank you so much. No you problem. are amazing. Thank you for Thank sharing you. your life. I know that there's somebody out there right now who's listening to us who has found a bit of light at the end of her tunnel. So thank you for bearing your soul and being with us today. No and problem. Thank it's my you pleasure. To everybody who's tuned in, I told you we have some fascinating women who are joining our movement. Join me again tomorrow. Go onto our website, register to attend the online summit. Women like this are going to be running workshops, teaching you how they got out of the situations they're in, giving you tools, things that you can do after the event, because sometimes you need more help after you've left that relationship than before. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Gertrude Macha here in beautiful Wellington, New Zealand. Have a fantastic day wherever you are in the world, and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.